afternoon and welcome to the 2023 Poetry or Sacramento County Poetry Out Loud competition. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Make this exciting. Um, so I'm Santi Soriano and I'm the Executive Director of Communications with the Sacramento County Office of Education and on behalf of school superintendent, county school su superintendent, uh, Dave Gordon, and also on behalf of the uh, Sacramento County Board of Education, I welcome you to today's competition. So we are very happy and proud to not only be the hosts, but also to be the sponsors, uh, one of the sponsors of this lovely event. Um, and it's an event that's inspiring and something that is definitely um, in, in partnership and in support of the arts. So welcome to everybody. So today we have the pleasure of honoring five amazing students for their dedication to the arts and to poetry. And so for our audience, so you understand, make sure we have, pretty sure everybody here understands Poetry Out Loud, but I'll just remind you about the contest. Poetry Out Loud is a contest that encourages the nation's youth to learn about the greatness of poetry through memorization and recitation. And it's also supported by the National Endowment of the Arts and the Poetry Foundation, along with many other US uh, state agencies, and state art agencies specifically. Now, Poetry Out Loud uses sort of a pyramid structure that starts in the classroom, uh, and then winners advance to a school-wide competition, then to a regional and or state competition and then ultimately to national finals. Mm. So today we will select our Sacramento County representative to the state competition. But before we move on, I would like to introduce our judges. So um, I would like to first start with having all judges uh, stand or stand when I call your name. And then uh, you can turn around and face the audience as well, let them know who you are. So we'll start with Dr. Steve Winlock. Dr. Winlock serves as Executive Director of the Sacramento County Office of Education Leadership Institute, and he's also a TV personality, theater performer, and educational motivator. So thank you, Dr. Winlock. We also have Dr. Chris Rowe. <laughs> Dr. Rowe is a retired director of teacher induction at the Sacramento County Office of Ed, and I'm sure is also a, uh, a lover and uh, supporter of the arts as well. And then we have Miss Jacqueline White. And she's assistant superintendent of our court and community schools with the Sacramento County Office of Ed, as well as career and technical education. And I know Miss White also has a dance background, so she's right. very proud of. Uh, then we have Miss Allison Kegley. She is executive director of Friends of Arts, or Friends of Sacramento Arts. Um, and I've known Allison for a very long time, and both of us have enjoyed the arts uh, in, in all of the different places that we've been. <laughs> so welcome. Um, also, we have our accuracy judge. This is Cheryl Roberts. Cheryl is a program analyst with the Sacramento County Office of Ed School of Education and for a teacher intern program. Thank you. And then, of course, our score tabulator. This is Jamie Spagnoli. And Ms. Spagnoli is our staff secretary, also for the Sacramento County Office of Ed School of Education. So welcome to our judges. The, um, we'd like to, at this point in time, also welcome our students, uh, the school winners and runners up. Can you please all stand so you can be recognized? I see all of them. I think all of them are here today. Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. And before we go any further, I want to also make sure that we um, say thank you to uh, and recognize all of the parents and coaches and everybody who's been in support of uh, each of our poets uh, to also please stand and be recognized. Thank you. <laughs> all right. At the end of this program, we will announce the names of two students. One will become the Sacramento County's representative to the state competition, and the other one will be our runner-up. 
So now it's time to begin the 2023 Sacramento County Poetry Out Loud competition. Are you all ready? Okay, excellent. So let me go through the rules. A couple of housekeeping and competition rules. So number one, take a look now. Please turn off cell phones. Double check, turn off the ringer. <laughs> if you have an iWatch that happens to also call you when <laughs> your phone is turned off, turn that off. Um, during the competition, we ask that you are please quiet during the recitations to give students their optimum conditions for reciting their poem. And also please remain seated during the recitations. Now you may enter and exit the theater between student recitations. Um, the two exits are behind you. And then there will be um, bell alerts from the Rosemont High School uh, during the competition. We have the, the noted times. Uh, what I don't have is actually a clock. So <laughs> I would have to kind of uh, tease, either get my phone that I'll have to look at to see, I can double track the times. Um, but during that, if, if a bell goes off, uh, then this is what will happen. So we have no control to turn the bells off or the sound off in the theater. And if a bell is scheduled to go off just before a recitation, then we will, be, uh, we will try to hold off until after the bell stops. And then if a student happens to be reciting um, and the bell alert rings, the student will have the opportunity to begin again with their recitation or they can stop and continue where they left off. And there will be no penalty that's incurred, okay? Um, so I would ask this time if um, J uh, Jasmine or Dr. Winlock, if you could my, hand me my purse and I'll grab my phone just so I can keep track of the times. It's over here. Right there. And I'll just take my phone. Sure. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're good so far. 12.46 is passed, so that was the last bell. <laughs> 1.33 is the next one, so everybody knows. So there's going to be two rounds today for the students to recite their poems. In round one, the school winners will recite their first selected poem in ABC order according to their first names. There will be a short tally break for judges and, score, and the scorekeeper to tally scores. And then during that time, there will be some refreshments or uh, if you wanna take a moment uh, out in the lobby, you can do so. In round two, students will recite their second poem in ABC order based on their last name. So after the two rounds are complete, the tabulator and scorekeeper will tally the final scores. If there happens to be a tie score, the student with the highest overall performance score will win. If that also results in a tie, the highest accuracy score will count. If scores remain tied, each of the two finalists will choose one of their poems to recite again as a separate score to break the tie. With the final tabulation, we will then announce the Sacramento County Poetry Out Loud runner-up and winner who will move forward to represent our county in the state competition in March. And then there's one final note uh, that if you notice the cameras that are here, the Sacramento Cable Consortium is, uh, the Sacramento Educational Cable Consortium is recording the event and is producing a TV program that will air at a future time with dates and times to be announced. Okay. All right, so I think we are ready to, I wanna say ready to rumble, but we're ready to roll. Okay, so I'm gonna announce our first student. I'll tell you a little bit about them, where they're from, the name of their poem, and students, uh, as, you, as I call your name, you'll be coming up uh, stage left, and then come on up to the microphone, and then as you're, finish, you will just exit stage right, uh, and then go ahead and have our seat again. Okay, thumbs up out there. Awesome, very good. All right, our first student will be Mr. Alex Yu. Alex Yu is from John F. Kennedy High School, 
and uh, he is interested, come on up, Mr. Yu. And he is interested in computer science and engineering, and he plans to attend a four-year college or university. His first poem that he will be reciting is called Filling Station by Elizabeth Bishop. I present to you, Mr. Alex Yu. Filling Station by Elizabeth Bishop. Oh, but it is dirty. This little filling station, oil soaked, oil permeated to a disturbing overall black translucency. Be careful with that match. Father wears a dirty oil soaked monkey suit that cuts him under the arms and several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. It's a family filling station, all quite thoroughly dirty. Do they live in the station? It has a cement porch behind the pumps and on it, a set of crushed and grease impregnated wicker work. On the wicker sofa, a dirty dog, quite comfy. Some comic books provide the only note of color of certain color. They lie upon a big dim doily draping a tabaret, part of the set, beside a big herstute begonia. Why the extraneous plant? Why the tabaret. Why, oh why, the doily. Embroidered in daisy stitch with marguerites, I think, and heavy with gray crochet. Somebody embroidered the doily. Somebody waters the plant, or oils it, maybe. Somebody arranges the rows of cans so that they softly say, Esso, so, 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 to high-strung automobiles. Somebody loves us all. Thank you. Thank you, Alex Yu. And we will wait for the judges to make, do their scoring. And in just a little bit, I'll have our next poet uh, come onto the stage. So I know all of our judges are uh, definitely for the arts, and as am I. I didn't really introduce some of my background. While we're waiting a little bit, I can give you a little bit of insight into some of the things that I've done and how the arts have really helped me. Uh, I was uh, a drama major at UC Irvine. And I remember in high school, just always, I was always in plays and always musical theater was, was the thing that I liked the most. And I know one, one lesson or one thing that I probably really gained from being in plays and memorizing parts and whatnot was it really helped out in the classroom because people, the other kids in the classroom would often, they knew I was memorizing things. <laughs> I don't know if I was necessarily learning them, but I was memorizing them. Uh, but they'd always kind of lean over me, hey, do you remember this? And I said, yeah, it's this, this, and this, just because I could memorize. So it's something definitely a benefit. All right, we're ready for our next student. Uh, this is Isis Fowler. Isis, please come on up. And Isis is from Intercom High School. And she, her favorite poets are Edgar Allan Poe and Oscar Wilde. And she also in, enjoys writing, acting, singing, and of course, reading. So her first poem today will be in round one, The Conqueror Worm, I can't say that very well, The Conqueror Worm by Edgar Allan Poe. Lo, tis a gala night within the lonesome latter years, an angel throng, bewinged, bedight, 
in veils and drowned in tears, sit in a theater to see a play of hopes and fears, while the orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Mimes in the form of God on high mutter and mumble low, and hither and thither fly, mere puppets they who come and go at bidding of vast formless things that shift the scenery to and fro, flapping from out their condor wings invisible woe. That motley drama, oh, be sure it shall not be forgot, with phantom chased forevermore by crowd that sees it not, through a circle that ever returneth in to the selfsame spot, and much of madness and more of sin and horror the soul of the plot. But see, amid the mimic rout, a crawling shape intrude, a blood-red thing which rides from out the scenic solitude. It rides, it rides, with mortal pangs, the mimes become its food, and seraphs sob at vermin fangs in human gore imbued. Out, out of the lights, out all, and over each quivering form, the curtain, a funeral pall, comes down with the rush of a storm, while the angels are pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling, affirm that the play is the tragedy man and its hero, the conqueror worm. Thank you, Isis. Isis Fowler, the, yep. no worry. the conqueror worm by Edgar Allan Poe. So there's many, many talents that are developed uh, in learning poetry. And one of the ones that comes to mind first off is singing and being able to um, pronounce words and whatnot. I teach ESL in the evenings and I tell you that skill really comes in handy when you're working with people from other countries who've never used the muscles that we use in English to speak. And it's just fun because you can work. And poetry is actually a wonderful way to help people start to learn a language as well because there's a sing-song component to it or you learn intonation and you learn words and you learn, or you, you get, to, it's very visual, it can be very visual. So um, it's something that's definitely used in teaching. Okay, all right, we're ready for our third student to come up, Ms. Julia Smith from Elk Grove High School. <laughs> Julia Smith, her favorite poet is Edgar Allan Poe, and she's also on the school's swim team and also mock trial team. They just finished up, I think, last week on mock trial, so congratulations on that. Um, Julia will be uh, reciting her for first round, Miss You. Would you like to grab that chilled tofu we love by Gabrielle Calvo Coressi? Miss, you would like to grab that chilled tofu we love by Gabrielle Calvo Coressi. Do not care if you bring only your light body. Would just be so happy to sit at the table and talk about the menu. Miss you. Wish we could bet which chilies they'll put on the cubes of tofu. Our favorite. Sometimes green, sometimes red. Roasted, we always thought. But so cold and fresh, how did they do it? Wish you could be here to talk about it like it was so important. Wish you could. Watched you on the screens as I was walking, as I was cooking. Wished you could get out of the hospital. Can't bring myself to order our dish and eat it in the car. Miss you laughing. Miss you coming in from the cold or one too many meetings. Laughing. I'll order already. I'll order seven helpings, some dumplings, those cold yam noodles that you like. You can come in your light body or skeleton or beavers while well, I don't even care. No, you have a long way to travel. No, I don't even know if it's long at all. Wish you could tell me what you're reading. If you're reading, miss you. I'm at the table in the back. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Julia Smith from Elk Grove High School with Miss You. Would you like to grab that chilled chill tofu we love by Gabrielle Cavocaresi? So another interesting point that I was thinking of my journey from high school and going into university and going into the arts um, was just about, I, I always thought I wanted to be on stage and do the acting part. I did acting and I did a lot of uh, musical theater. And when I got to UC Irvine, uh, I fell in love with musical theater. It was something I really wanted to do, but more so to my surprise, I became much more involved in production and started as a uh, working in costumes and then set design and then lighting. And lighting was just something that I just, I had such a, it was just a lot of fun doing all the lighting. So, um, and I remember I was, they called me the go queen at that time because I was in charge of the lights. So you, you weren't on, you, you couldn't star, you couldn't be a star on stage without the lights. And that's what I remembered the most. So I think it was definitely uh, a lot of lessons learned along the way, but a lot of great adventures and um, just, I don't know, it was a good journey so far. And I don't think my journey's over though. <laughs> All right, so we're going on to our fourth student. Uh, this is Leah Nelson. She's from Grant Union High School. <laughs> Leah says that her favorite poem is Langston Hughes. And she enjoys that his poems are often short but convey a very important and deep message and that she also feels connected to a lot of topics he covers, whether it's about being African-American or finding inner peace. So Leah is here. She's going to be in, first, in her first round reciting the poem, We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence, Lawrence, uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be so overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. That's Leah Nelson from Grant Union High School with her poem, We Wear the Mask, by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So as the light board operator on one of the shows, uh, I, I learned light board on three different stages. So there were three different theaters. Uh, you had to learn light board manually, and you had to learn Eventually, you, you, gr you graduated up to learning how to use the light board, the, the um, automated light board. That meant you also had to learn how to program it. Um, and I'll never forget the one, there was one big show in the big theater uh, where you had to switch one of the circuits mid-show. <laughs> I just remember having to run up for a week straight, run out of the light board room, run down the catwalk, uh, pull one switch, plug in the other switch, run back, uh, and push, push the go button, and at the same time be on a headset talking to the stage manager and making sure everybody's in place. So it's a lot of fun. Production ended up being just a lot of fun, a lot of craziness. So it's good. Ready? Okay, our fifth poet is Samantha Law from Natomas Charter School. Samantha says that her favorite poet is either Shakespeare, E.E. E. Cummings, or Shel Silverstein. Um, she also plays the viola and loves visual art. So Samantha's here with us today, and she is going, and for her first round, she'll be uh, reciting Diameter by Michelle Y. Burke. Diameter by Michelle Y. <coughs> Burke. You love your friend. So, you fly across the country to see her. 
Your friend is grieving. When you look at her, you see that something's missing. You look again. She seems all there. Reading glasses, sarcasm, leather pumps. What did you expect? Ruins? Demeter without arms in the British Museum? Your friend says she believes there's more pain than beauty in this world. When, De when Persephone was taken, Demeter damned the world for half of the year. The other half remained warm and bountiful. The Greeks loved symmetry. On the plane, the man next to you read a geometry book. The lesson on finding the circumference of a circle. On circumference, you can find the way around if you know the way across. You try across with your friend. You try around. I don't believe in the afterlife, she says. But after Kay died, I thought I might go after her. In case I'm wrong. In case she's somewhere waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. That's Samantha from Natoma's Charter with her poem, Diameter, by Michelle Weiberg. Thank you, students. And we are finishing up round one. Yay! <laughs> I know it's hard. We're all supposed to be quiet. But at the same time, we have to applaud also. Um, so we're going to take a little break, and then we'll resume in about 10 minutes. Judges, yes. And refresh. I believe refreshments are out in the front lobby for your enjoyment. And please remember that there are no, there's no food allowed in the auditorium. So uh, at this time, you have a 10-minute break, and I think the next bell, uh, we still have lots of time. Next bell is supposed to go at 1.33. Okay. All right, judges, are you ready? Our judges are ready. And then audience, are you ready? Yes? Right, great. Awesome. So very good round one. And then, of course, our students, are you ready? Thumbs up? Yes? Good? OK, cool. Thumbs up, clapping. Both works. All right, we are ready to move on to the round two of the 2023 Poetry Out Loud competition for Sacramento County. All right, we're going to be starting then in round two with Isis Fowler, again from Intercom High School. Isis, please come on up. I didn't realize this, but Isis apparently also plays the harmonica. That's cool. Isis for round two will be reciting Often Rebuked, Yet Always Back Returning by Emily Bronte. Right. This is often rebuked, yet always back returning by Emily Bronte. Often rebuked, yet always back returning to those first ideas that were born with me and leaving busy chase of wealth and learning for idle dreams of things which cannot be. Today I will not seek the shadowy region. Its unsustaining vastness waxes drear, and visions rising lesion after lesion bring the unreal world too strangely near. I'll walk, but not in old hero traces, and not in paths of high morality, and not among the half-distinguished faces, the clouded forms of long-past history. I'll walk where my own nature would be leading. It vexes me to choose another guide where the gray flocks and ferny glens are feeding, where the wild wind blows on the mountainside. What have those lonely mountains worth revealing? More glory and more grief than I can tell. The earth that moves one human heart to feeling can center both the worlds of heaven and hell. Thank you, Isis. <laughs> Stay true. Awesome. I was reflecting back on my, my high school years again. And at the end of high school, I was, I was lucky. I was fortunate to be able to graduate early. And I spent my senior year overseas in Germany. And the arts followed me. 
So while I was in Germany, I learned how to ballroom dance. And um, I got to tell you, again, having known poetry and going through learning, learning parts and reciting and memorization really came in handy when you had to learn German. I had no, I had never had German before. I learned it there. Um, and in, when I was in one class, a German class, one of the projects was to recite a poem in, in old German. And I'll tell you, it was one way to at least make your, make your mark because no other student could do it. I was the only one who could actually do it. And I didn't even speak German. Okay. Next up, we have Samantha Law. Come on up, Samantha. <laughs> Samantha, again, at Notomas Charter School. And um, she's still exploring what she's going to do for college. And she's up here on stage with round two with her poem, Self-Inquiry Before the Job Interview by Gary Soto. Self-Inquiry Before the Job Interview by Gary Soto. Did you sneeze? Yes. I rid myself of the imposter inside me. Did you iron your shirt? Yes. I used the steam of mother's hate. Did you wash your hands? Yes. I learned my hygiene from a raccoon. I prayed on my knees, and my knees answered with pain. I gargled. I polished my shoes until I saw who I was. I inflated my resume by employing my middle name. I walked to my interview early, the sun like a ring on an electric stove. I patted my hair when I entered the wind of a revolving door. The guard said, for a guy like you, it's the 19th floor. The economy was up. Flags whipped in every city plaza in America. This I saw for myself as I rode the elevator. Empty because everyone had a job but me. Did you clean your ears? Yes. I heard my fate in the drinking fountain's idiotic drivel. Did you slice a banana into your daily mush? I added a pinch of salt, two raisins to sweeten my breath. Did you remember your pen? I remember my fingers when the elevator opened. I shook hands that dripped like a dirty sea. I found a chair and desk. My name tag said, my name. Through the glass ceiling, I saw the heavy rumps of CEOs. Outside my window, the sun was a burning stove. All of us pushing papers to keep it going. Thank you, Samantha. Again, Samantha Law from the Thomas Charter School with her poem, Self-Inquiry Before the Job Interview by Gary Soto. Next, we have Leah Nelson. <laughs> Leah is from Grant Union High School. And um, she also enjoys oh, sports photography. And after graduation, she sees herself attending a four-year university to gain further education in English and business marketing. So with us today in round two, Leah is going to be reciting Catch a Little Rhyme by Eve Miriam. Catch a Little Rhyme by Eve Miriam. Once upon a time, I caught a little rhyme. I set it on the floor, but it ran right out the door. I chased it on my bicycle, but it melted to an icicle. I scooped it up in my hat, but Excuse me. I scooped it up in my hat. Once upon a time, I caught a little rhyme. I set it on the floor, but it ran out the door. I chased it on my bicycle, but it melted to an icicle. I scooped it up in my hat, but it turned into a cat. I caught it by the tail, but it stretched into a whale. 
I followed it on a boat, but it changed into a goat. When I fed it tin and paper, it became a tall skyscraper. Then it grew into a kite and flew far out of sight. Thank you, Leah. That's Leah Nelson from Grant Union High School with Catch a Little Rhyme by Eve Merriam. So definitely the arts is something that I think has really rounded out a lot of the things that I've done, both educationally and in my prof professional life and whatnot. There, there's so many things that I can say are benefits of having an arts education, from being creative to public speaking to um, confidence building in front of an audience. You know, they oftentimes say that one of the biggest fears people have is public speaking, simply because everybody's looking at you um, and, they, you, and you, in, you instinctly believe they're there to kill you. <laughs> so the, the great thing in being on the stage is you really can't tell because the lights are usually so bright you can't even really see anybody. So, so it's not so bad when you're up here. Ready? Cool. All right, we have Julia Smith once again from Elk Grove High School. And after graduation, Julia intends to attend a college and hopefully become a speech therapist. And she happens to be a teacup collector in her free time. So Julia is with us for round two. She will be reciting The Coming Woman by Mary Weston Fordham. The Coming Woman by Mary Weston Fordham. Just look, tis a quarter past six, love, and not even the fires are caught. Well, you know I must be at the office, but as usual, breakfast will be late. Now hurry and wake up the children. Dress them as fast as you can. Poor dearies, I know they'll be tardy. Dear me, what a slow, pokey man. Have the tenderloin broiled, nice and juicy. Have the toast browned and buttered, all right? Be sure that you settle the coffee and be sure that the silver is bright. When ready, just run up and call me. At eight to the office I go. Lest poverty, grim, should overtake us. Tis bread and butter, you know. The bottom from stalks may fall out. My bonds may get below par. Then surely I seldom could spare you a nickel to buy a cigar. Already now, while I am eating, just bring up my wheel to the door. Then wash up the dishes, and mine now have dinner promptly at four. For tonight is our women's convention, and I am to speak first. You know the men veto us in private, but in public they shout, that's so. So bye-bye. In case of a rap, love, before opening the door, you must look. Oh, how could a civilized woman exist without a man cook? Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Julia Smith with Elk Grove High School with her poem, The Coming Woman by Mary Weston Fordham. One of the other great things about the arts and just being on stage and public speaking, um, people ask me, why did I pursue communications? And I usually just, you know, I think back and I, we're gonna have a few bells. I think we have 140 is the next one too. So um, I think back, you know, how, how did I end up being somebody on stage? Was it a psychological, um, you know, opportunity for me to find peace or, or what is it? And my parents tell me there was one story um, and it makes sense, I'm a storyteller, but when I was about four years old, I would sit in the back seat of the car on that little hump where you know, it used to pull down, you could sit in there like in a station wagon. And I would tell the story of the three bears over and over and over again. Okay. So it's 136, do you wanna wait or do we wanna, 140 is the next bell. I think we might want to just, yeah, just the four minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Once upon a time. <laughs> it is. 
is. I mean, you know, storytelling is is just a, it's an ancient art. I was I was writing the uh, some talking points for. Uh, moot court next week. We have the final round of moot court uh, that will be taking place over at Intercom High School. And one of the things that I was thinking is trying to think of, you know, what's so important about moot court or even mock trial? And it's the, it's, you know, an oral argument goes back thousands of years of, of when it began. And it is so critical in our democracy today that we have people who can get up and have rhetoric on stage or in front of a large audience to make their point and have and be able to have the art of persuasion. And so the with the arts, with acting and whatnot, it, you know, they could just as well also be senators uh, getting up to, to express an argument. And so I, I looked back and I was looking at what, what is the history of the oral argument and in, According to Google, or what I was, I was looking at, it goes back to ancient Greece. And um, you know, some of the first, it was Aristotle who talked about the, um, the art of persuasion really being public speaking. And that was sort of the start of the rise of democracy. So I think it's something very important. And it's important for all of our students to have voice and to be able to express their voice, whether it's in a competition like this, whether it's in a moot court or mock trial kind of a situation, or if it's on campus and they just want to you know, be able to promote something that they're doing and, and talk about the things that they're engaged in. So student voice is very important. And uh, I think we, we're seeing that today. And I think we have more opportunities to have students heard uh, either on the stage or in the stage in its school. So we look forward to that. I think we're almost there. Two minutes to go for the next bell. I remember one, uh, the one German poem I was trying to think of. I don't know if I remember the whole thing, but part of it is it was middle high German. And hardly even in today's world do many Germans know middle high German. It would be the equivalent of um, middle English. So it, like Shakespearean, like just a little bit before Shakespearean language. And that yeah, was a lot of fun learning the poem. So maybe at the end, I might try to remember what some of the parts are. I'll have to guess. But learning languages is another thing I love doing. And I think, again, the arts have, have really helped in that. Because I just, I'm curious all the time. I like to communicate. I don't, I want to know what people are saying. <laughs> so one more minute, the bell's supposed to go off. And then uh, following this, so we'll have our fifth student uh, coming up on stage. And then following that, we, our photographer did ask our photographer, is also Mr. John Ward. He's from our department in communications. And he works on our website and everything. Uh, he's one of our multimedia specialists. He, he's asked, there's the bell. He's asked that all of the students at the end come up on stage so he can take a photo before you, you go out and kind of wait around. So as soon as Mr. Yu has finished uh, and has at least gone out, then we'll have everybody come up and we'll do a group photo on stage. OK? Yes? All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Now we'll bring up Mr. Alex Yu, again, from John F. Kennedy High School. And look at this, our orator. I've done speech and debate for a few years. Alex Yu will be on stage on, for round two, reciting the poem, The Conqueror Worm, by Edgar Allan Poe. The Conqueror Worm, by Edgar Allan Poe. Lo, to is a gala night within the lonesome latter years, an angel throng. Bewinged, bedight in veils and drowned in tears, sit in a theater to see a play of hopes and fears while the orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Mimes, in the form of God on high, mutter and mumble low, and hither and thither fly. Mere puppets they who come and go at bidding of vast formless things that shift the scenery to and fro, flapping from out their condor wings, invisible woe. 
that motley drama. Oh, be sure, it shall not be forgot with its phantom chased forevermore by a crowd that sees it not, through a circle that ever returneth in to the self-same spot, and much of madness and more of sin and horror the soul of the plot. But see, amid the mimic rout, a crawling shape intrude, a blood-red thing that writhes from out of the scenic solitude. It writhes, it writhes, with mortal pangs the mimes become its food, and serve sob, at vermin fangs, and human gore imbued. Out, out are all the lights, out all. And over each quivering form, the curtain, a funeral pall, comes down with the rush of a storm, while the angels, all pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling a firm that the play is the tragedy man and its hero the conqueror worm thank you thank you mr yu it's alex yu from john f kennedy high school all right that concludes round two what i'd like then is for all of the um, student poets to please come up on stage, uh, stage left, and we can have, uh, John will, will organize you to take a photo. So come on up. And John, you let them know how you want to take the photo, if you need to rearrange them in some shape or form. Got to make it fun, at least. So at least one formal, one fun, one crazy photo. Yes, so at this point now, we are ready to announce our winners, uh, or our winner for today's competition. And before I announce them, I would like to have our judges to please come onto stage, stage left, enter, and I'll have you stand here in a line. When they, I call who the runner-up is first, then runner-up, you'll come up on this side, come in, you'll get the opportunity to shake the hands of the judges and then I will award you with your prize. I think, John, we can prob I can probably move that, um, the microphone so it's out of, out of view, and I think I'll put this over there. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Now you get to applause, you can make noise now. <laughs> Woo! All right, so our runner-up for this year's 2023 Sacramento County Poetry Out Loud competition is Julia Smith, Elk Grove High School. All right, and the moment now arises when we announce the winner of the 2023 Sacramento County Poetry Out Loud competition, and the winner is, who will move on to the state, state finals, is Alex Yu from John F. Kennedy High School. Congratulations. 
All right, thank you, judges. Would you, do you want to stay up and while we take pictures with the winner and the runner-up? Okay. And so at this point, so um, I'll close out today's event, but before we completely close, we will be having photography or a picture with our runner-up, Julia Smith, and also with our winner, Alex Yu. And um, I will go to just last comments. So the Sacramento County Office of Education would like to thank all of the school coaches for your time, effort, and enthusiasm that you have devoted to the Poetry Out Loud recitation program and for encouraging all students to learn more about great literature. Let's also acknowledge the many students who participated at their school sites in the Poetry Out Loud competition process. And of course, our students here, let's give them one more round of applause. Excellent job. All have gained, all who have been part of this competition have gained a broader appreciation of poetry, developing public speaking spill, skills, and increasing their sense of self-esteem through a powerful and meaning learning experience. So we thank all of the participants for their de dedication and sharing their talents with us today. It's been a pleasure being with you as well. And at this time, I will conclude, and I will ask for our school winners uh, to please, and the runner-up to please come on stage so we can take a group photo. All right, thank you, everyone. <laughs>